Welcome inside the Rollins Center. Fight fans right here on GFL.TV and, of course, Comcast Sportsnet. We are Dover Downs Hotel and Casino. Rich Quinones alongside my broadcast partner, Amir Hardcore Mansour. A great night of boxing fueled by Champs Management and, and, of course, courtesy of Dover Downs Hotel and Casino. As we get into the meat done. and potatoes of the night of boxing, Amir, we've got our co-main event and our main event. The co-main event is going to be an absolute dandy. I believe this could be the fight of the evening. It's scheduled for eight rounds. Cornelius Locke taking on Rogers Matagua. Locke has fought a lot of wars in the ring, but conversely, you look at a guy in Matagua, up there in age, 36, 37 years of age, has also fought some wars in the ring as well. He's a fighter that is extremely active all the time. To me, looks like these two guys are gonna butt heads from the get-go. Oh, for sure. You got two guys like this that have been through a lot of wars, been in a lot of fights, been, you know, in fights with tough opponents, tough competition. You know that when these two clash, you're going to see a nice fight. So if one of them don't go down, there's no knockout. You're going to see a, a war through, through round one all the way up to the very last round. Let's go inside the ring to our ring announcer, Larry Tornabi, to get us situated. From Champs Management in Dover Downs, it's time for the co-main event. Eight rounds in the super featherweight division. Introducing to you first, coming out of the blue corner, all the way from Tanzania, he came to settle in Philadelphia to continue his boxing career. Weighing 125 pounds, wearing black trunks with white lettering. His professional record, 27 wins, 19 of those by knockout, against 15 losses and two draws. Put your hands together for former world title challenger, Rogers the Tiger, Matagua. And his opponent in the red corner with a professional record of 21 wins, 13 of those by knockout, against six losses and two draws. He weighs 125 and one half pounds, wearing black trunks with a white trim. From Detroit, Cornelius Locke. <laughs> Referee Vic D. Wysocki with the final instructions. Boxers, you'll be giving your instructions in the dressing room. I expect a good clean bout. Obey my commands at all times and protect yourself at all times. Such gloves come out of the bell. It was that left hook by Gonzalez that stunned Matagua. I think his career kind of went downhill after he lost to Juan Manuel Lopez, which, by the way, that was a controversial. He actually took Lopez where he's never been in the 11th. He ultimately lost in the 12th after he was knocked down early in that one. He got absolutely ambushed by Gamboa, who a lot of people believe he shouldn't even been in the ring with. But the bottom line is... You look at both these men, perhaps crossroad is too easy to say. Matangua in the solid black trunks, Cornelius Locke in the black and gray trunks, and you'll see lightning across the belt line. Locke comes in with a solid 21-6 and two mark, 13 knockouts on his resume, Amir. Yeah, and you can see him, he's, he's coming out. He's trying to take complete control of the fight from the very outset. and. Um, that's the thing you got to do, man. You know, as soon as the bell rings, you got to show your opponent, like, look, I ain't here to play with you. I'm here to take full control of this fight. And when we talk about opponents stepping up in class, as I alluded to, when he stepped up, did Cornelius Locke go all the way back to 2004 against Cristobal Cruz, lost to Mario Santiago, who fought uh, Jorge Solis for the WBA Super Featherweight title back in 2013. You know, Locke lost to Santiago, Escalante, Garcia, the guy's fought a lot of guys. I mean, he's fought some world-class fighters, and so is Matagua. It's just right. a situation where maybe this is the, the second phase or third phase of their career. Maybe they understand the lights are kind of dwindling down a little bit. They want another moment or two in the sun. Right. Well, sometimes, you know, you got, <laughs> you got your top 10 and you got your top 20, you know, and sometimes guys stay in that top 20, man, and they're good enough to stay there and the minute that they rise, you know, to an opponent that's in that top 10, top five, top three, you know, they don't fare too good, you know, and they stay just below the th threshold of greatness, man. And uh, it looks like uh, Matagua has been rocked a couple of times already and, in this first round, man. And, and, and uh, yeah, to your point, Amir, I just wanted to add one thing. When you mentioned the punches that Matagua has <laughs> taken, the knock on him, it's always seemed that he chops his hands after he throws a punch. He's got that unorthodox, that wild style that leaves him open. Mm -hmm. We saw it against Lopez. Uh, we saw it against Gamboa, who just teed off on him. And 
you do that, you're exposed as a fighter. You're asking for problems. Right. And uh, but Matago is very, very uh, professional, man. And um, he almost timed. Oh, he got stung uh, right there by a right <laughs> lock by lock. And he, 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 like I said, he's been rocked a couple of times already. Um, he oh, looks, another right. Well, Locke is certainly lightning yeah. right now in round and number I one. I really don't think that if if uh, Locke keeps up this type of pressure and, and, and keeps hitting him with these type of combinations, no way he's going to survive eight rounds. Closing in on one round in the books between Matangwa and Locke.